Hi everyone. Um, for this unit, stretch and explore, we're going to be looking at blending. So for the assignment itself, you're going to go to this week's folder. You're going to find the assignment to download. And then when you get in here, you're going to click on the download button. Um, this is going to prompt it to download onto your surface. And then once that downloads, you're going to go over to Photoshop and we're going to open that file. So um, the first couple things we're going to do is we're going to get some of the workspace all set. That makes it a little bit easier for this project. And then we will move into the steps. So for this one, we can just go to open since it's already a Photoshop file. We're going to go to the document file. And then once this opens up, it's going to look something like this. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, change some of the workspace flow to make it a little bit easier. So the main things I want you to have over here is going to be the grayscale slider. So it'll look like this. If you have toggled off that one, um, just as a reminder, you'll go to those bars and then grayscale slider. Um, once you have that selected, we're going to go to um, and then get brushes added to this middle. So if you have anything else that's down here that's not brushes, you can get that closed out. So I can close out this navigator for now. Uh, and then for this brushes tab, if you have taken that down um, to put that back up, you're going to go to window brushes. And then that's going to usually pop up around here or so. And then you're going to click and drag it over into that menu. And then the third thing that you should have over here is going to be your layers. Um, with this document, there's going to be some layers that is just the formatting of the sheet itself. And then the, um, the area that we're going to draw in, there's two layers. One is essentially like the selection of where we can draw and where we cannot. And the other one is going to be the workable area. So you're going to select this one that has those two those bars of those two tones. Um, so don't select the one that's just the black and white. Um, once I have that selected, um, I'm going to minimize my layers down a little bit so I can't misclick on that one. And then I can have my brushes be a little bit larger. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select a brush that I want to use for the sheet. And then um, what we're going to start off with is we're going to um, essentially add in some more shades on this sheet to make it a little bit easier and give us a little bit more opportunity to practice. So we're going to add essentially more tones with each of these bars. Um, we can do that all at once. So I would say move your brush tool up to around like, I think 200 worked really well or like 300 worked really well last time we did this assignment. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to toggle between the eyedropper and the brush. So the eyedropper, you can select that with the key I as an Ivan. And then um, once that's selected, then I can select that initial shade. This one is reading at 73. You'll notice that change over in your grayscale slider. And then when you go back to brush, and you can do that just by going to the keyboard key B, as in Brenda. Um, and then when you go through and you start to start to draw, then you're going to have that next shade down. So right now it's set at that 73. So I'm getting that exact same shade as this one over here. And then this is going to allow me to essentially have a little bit more control over that transition. So I'm going to go down a little bit from that 73. I'm going to add in kind of my next kind of set of values that I want. And I'm going to do this in both columns for right now. I'm going to go down a little bit more. A little bit more. And then um, I believe the lighter shade ends up being around 40 or 30, if I remember right. So um, your last high shade will be somewhere around 40. And 
And then this is going to give us a good starting point so that as we go through each of these tools, you have a good range of shades to work from. So um, for the first one with manual selection, um, this is essentially the same idea of using your eyedropper tool and then using this a little bit more specifically. So instead of having like this range of values, I might decide that I want to go in and I want to make them a little bit more specific. So I might go in between those two shades there. I'm going to select again with my eyedropper. It goes slightly in between those couple shades that I had. 55, I'm going to go up to 62. I go back to my brush tool. I go up a little bit. And essentially what you're doing here is you're just working kind of in between almost like those half steps. And then you could even take um, like this lower end, that's at 33. Um, then what I could do is just do some future varieties down. So essentially this is um, kind of a very direct way to work with blending in Photoshop. Um, looking at kind of those step-by-step -step shadings. Um, it's kind of more similar to like marker filling where you're looking at those individual shades. And then the next one is gonna be opacity. Um, this one is a pretty bare bones one. Um, there's kind of two approaches you can do with this. One is to use the opacity with pressure or to adjust your opacity. So um, if you're using the opacity for pressure that's going to be the selection here where it's that circle and then the pen icon that's next to opacity. Um, it can be a little challenging on this one because you do have to um, kind of be mindful of how much pressure you're putting down. So if I'm looking at that initial color and then I'm shading into this next selection, um, you're going to do that by pressure. So I'm going to start by doing a light pressure and then as I build up I'm gonna have less of that kind of noticeable transition um, so depending on the brush you, you can use um, this one can be more or less helpful um, for some of the brushes it's not great um, so instead what you can do is if you turn down your opacity in the slider so let's say I go to 60% um, that means when I put down my brush essentially I'm getting like 60% of this initial color, but that I'm also seeing underneath a little bit. Um, and for blending and sheeting, for most of the brushes, a lower setting in your opacity is going to be good because as you layer it up, you'll see more of those differences. So I would say aim for, um, I think most of the time, like 25 ends up being a good starter point. But it allows you to build up kind of that transition in your value and to see that transition. Um, something to also note is that you're going to do that same thing of as you go through and blend, you're going to use your eyedropper tool. So you're going to be kind of toggling back and forth between I and B on your keyboard. So I would say try to get in the habit of keeping your keyboard attached as we start to get into blending. Um, and then what you're going to do is as you build up, going to start to use your eyedropper to blend between those two shades. And you can go in either direction with these. Um, it can be helpful with these to kind of go in like slight circles. Um, that makes the mark making a little bit less noticeable, similar to like when we work with like graphite or charcoal. Um, whereas if you kind of go with straight lines, sometimes it does give you kind of that visible marking, which can be used very intentionally, but um, something to keep in mind. But as you go through, you're just going to start to go through and start to mark in some of that initial value. and looking at those transitions. So the opacity one's pretty simple. You're just looking at that lower opacity and then kind of blending it together as you get it worked together. So um, it's a slightly rougher way, um, usually for 
these pens that are um, kind of more solid. You're not going to get as much of a smoother blend, whereas if you're using one of the like charcoal or graphite sets, those usually work out really well um, and can be a little bit more natural. So the next one is going to be looking at flow. So you're going to um, essentially keep your opacity pressure setting the same, but you're going to lower your flow setting as well. So I'm going to drop that down to around like 10 to 15. And then I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to select my initial color. I'm going to go back to my brush. I'm going to size my brush back up because that changed. Um, and essentially what this does is since you're flow has kind of that tail end effect. Um, it allows you essentially to have a gradual shift between those colors a little bit more. Um, so when you have that more of a tail and you use kind of like a flicking horizontal motion between those two shades, um, the transition is going to be more gradual. So here, let me see if I can just show you on this next one, kind of that effect that ends up happening. So when I have that kind of flicking in between, um, essentially that tail kind of creates that texturing then where it starts to dissipate a little bit more at the end of your mark. And then you'll just keep going with the same process. So selection, go back to your brush, looking at flicking in between those two values. Select my next value. And you're just kind of going back and forth with these ones. Um, and this one can be a nice one if you want more textural transitions in your blending. Um, it allows you to really kind of see, especially with these very textural brushes, allows you to see more of that transition. Um, and allows you to see more of that effect. Alrighty, and then the last one in this first column is gonna be the smudge tool. Um, this is gonna be where you're using the smudge brushes that are built in. So these are gonna be the ones with those little hands with a finger. Um, when you go in and select those, um, the nice thing with these is you don't have to do that selection back and forth between your eyedropper and your brush. You can just go in with a brush. Um, do keep in mind that some of these do start off pretty small. So you may have to play with how large you want that to be. But the smudge tools are really nice in the sense that it allows you to get very, very smooth transitions between your shades. Um, whereas with the opacity flow manual selection, you're obviously getting much more noticeable changes. Um, and that can be used kind of with an intent as far as style. Um, can also be a good consideration when you're going in and looking at like different styles of mark making or as far as different styles of like texturing that you want. Um, sometimes smudging is going to be a better option when you have those smoother transitions that you want. Whereas if you do want those more noticeable transitions and you want to see that mark making, um, Oftentimes visual artists that like kind of more of that visual mark making and want to have that um, kind of like mark of the artist present, um, smudge tool can be sometimes not the best option because it is like such an airbrushed, airbrushed effect where it's, um, you know, it looks very, very computerized, very soft. Um, not really realistic to any material that we use traditionally, um, but it's a nice one in the sense that it does allow you to get really soft, smooth transitions between those shades.